Hi, my name is Gudrun from GE Designs. Welcome to my live quilting chat, Tipsy Tuesday. Hi, everybody. Thank you for being with us here on this lovely Tuesday evening. It's June. It's June already. How amazingly fast did that happen? Um, if you're here, if you're new, make sure you follow us on Facebook, like our page, and you'll be notified when you ever you, uh, we go live. Also, if you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe, and the same thing will happen. We'll just pop up right there whenever we go live. Uh, we love it if you use those thumbs up and hearts throughout the show. It gives us feedback, and we love to see it. Of course, you always have to introduce yourself to everybody. Say hi to everybody and where you're tuning in from. Just add the comments because it's always great to comment more on our shows. We have two winners every show, a giveaway for a $25 gift card. One is always chosen randomly from your comments, so the more you comment, the better chances. And then we have a giveaway question at the end where even if you're not watching live, you can also win. So on tonight's show, we will be taking a little more deeper look into some quilt patterns that would work well with panels or fuzzy cutting. We talked about fuzzy cutting last week, so we're gonna kinda go deeper in on that. And I got a little treat for you. Um, we also are going to kinda see a lot of fabric because as many of you may know, there was no Friday show. We took a little break over the holiday weekend. So things have been piling up at the warehouse. So I can't wait to see, show you what is, what is in. Of course, our giveaway from last week, I asked you a question. Uh, have you made a fuzzy cut quilt? And our winner from last week's show is Miss Laura Bird Smith. Congratulations. She says she has never made a fuzzy cut quilt, but her mother-in-law made them all the time. Well, there's, there's time. There's time still. Um, like I said, Fuzzy Cut Friday, uh, Fuzzy Cut uh, last Tuesday was a great topic. A lot of you had some great questions, um, and we're going to dive deeper into that. But I hope everybody had a wonderful weekend. We sure did. We had a little bit of a getaway, that, which involved a little bit of work and a little bit of fun. So we, we enjoyed ourselves. Had some good food, um, met good people, and really enjoyed our time. Um, so again, we talked about fuzzy cutting or um, working with panels last week, and I pre-recorded a video on how to fuzzy cut using your Stripology squared rulers, both the larger one and the smaller one. And I talked about how I cut up my panel blocks. I always look at them and kind of decide where do I want to do the trim, because those blocks are never straight. I promise you that <laughs> they never print the straight. So I thought, even though you may have watched it last week, I thought we should watch it again to kind of refresh everybody, uh, watch, it, watch it together, and then I got some more stuff for you right after that. So check it out. Hi, my name is Gudrun from GE Designs, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to fussy cut fabric, fabric panels, or even embroidery blocks using my favorite tools, the Stripology Squared Rulers. The Stripology Squared Ruler is a smaller version of the Stripology XL and it was basically designed to square up any block up to 12 and a half inches, but it is excellent for doing any kind of fuzzy cutting. The Stripology Mini Ruler is a smaller version of the squared. It's great to do smaller things working with smaller blocks, so I'm going to show you how you can easily fuzzy cut fabric, fabric panels, and even embroidery blocks. So first off, I want to talk about the markings. So the markings on the ruler, you will start off by finding what do you want to fuzzy cut, what is the size you need. The white squares are for using half inch blocks, so half inch sizes. You will be using white squares and white lines. Black squares and black dotted lines are for whole inch sizes. So for example, I'm going to start by using the mini and we're going to fuzzy cut this Eiffel Tower to use in a quilt. So I'm going to move this one out of the way. One of the tools that I love to use with these ruler, whether I'm squaring up blocks or just or fuzzy cutting or anything, are my G-Easy ruler stickers. They come in two different packs of colors. 
three colors in each, and believe me, I use them all, all the time. So figuring out what size I want here for the Eiffel Tower, probably if I'm using it in a square position in a quilt, I would be cutting it to a four and a half inch square. You could also do a rectangle easily, but I'm gonna show you how to do the four and a half inch square. So first off, I wanna find the white four and a half inch square on the ruler, and I've put my arrows on the four corners just to identify that, that square. And then I've also gone down from the corners of the square to indicate which slits I'm going to be uh, cutting through. So I have put pink arrows on the slits where I need to cut. So each square will have a center line. You'll see the thick white center lines going through the center of the square. This is the exact center of the block. It also has the white dotted line going diagonally through the center. So this is what makes this so great to, for, for fuzzy cutting. So we want to center it on kind of the Eiffel Tower. So all I do is take this uh, horizontal line here and vertical, place it right in the center of the Eiffel Tower, and then I can kind of identify, okay, how far from the edge is the bottom of the Eiffel Tower? This is about a half inch here, and then I have about a half inch up here because I'm looking at these four corners. So now it's perfectly positioned to cut it into a four and a half. So I just go into the slits where I had marked with the pink arrows. I make my two cuts, and then we turn it and position it again using that center line here and noticing where the edge is. This is where I'm gonna be cutting and this is where I'm gonna be cutting. The second thing we wanna also do is make sure that the cut edge here is aligned with that horizontal line so our piece will be absolutely square. And then we do the other two sides and we come up with a square. So if you wanted to do a rectangle instead, that's very easy. You start off doing it uh, shorter. So I started off trimming three and a half, and then I turned it and trimmed it on the four and a half. So very easy to do any kind of size square or rectangle. Now the mini ruler only goes up to six and a half inches. So that is the largest you can use with this ruler. But of course, the original squared ruler, you can go all the way up to 12 and a half inches. So I love this when I am fuzzy cutting fabric panels. If you want to cut them a certain size and use it in a quilt. So you could take a panel block and replace that with, with any pattern, just to replace a block with a panel block. And um, what I like to do when I'm cutting these kinds of panels up is kind of first check how big is the panel by using kind of the inner uh, left side, so on the zero slit and on the zero line, I will kind of see, okay, this is about eight, uh, about nine inches. This block is nine inches. I could also make it smaller and kind of cut it on inside that little plaid portion. So it could be as small as a seven inches finished, so a seven and a half inch cut block, or I could make it even bigger and utilize some of that black around and make it as big as 10 inches. So that gives you lots of options for what kind of quilt you wanna use this in. So one other thing I always wanna do when I'm using blocks like this, because frames and lines like this printed on fabric are never gonna be straight. So you never wanna just go in and cut with scissors because you're never gonna have a perfect square that way. So I always look for space and try to either utilize the black around here or I would cut somewhere in the middle here where I have some wiggle room. So when it's sewn into a quilt, you won't see a line that's half on, half in, um, half in, half out throughout the quilt. So I would probably start with the outer. So let's say I'm gonna trim this to a 10 inch square. So that will be a nine and a half inch finished block. You could also do a nine and a half inch finish, a uh, nine and a half inch trim for a 10 inch block. So let's just do 10 because I wanna show you how to do the whole inch unit. So I'm gonna start by placing my arrows on the four corners. So I find the 10 inch corner up here and also on the opposite corner. So I'm following the black line. And then I wanna go down here 
and go straight down to the 10. I'm just going to mark my where I'm going to cut. So on the 10 and on the 0. So you'll notice with the, even if you're using black lines and on this side, you still will have a diagonal black line going through the center. And then, of course, this is 10 inches. So your 5 inch line going this way and your 5 inch slit going this way is going to be your centers. So you can still use that if you need to center anything like I showed with the mini ruler. So now all I'm going to do is center that those markings and uh, on my block and make sure that I'm about even distance from the edge of the block. As you can see, it's far, uh, far from being straight, but I want to have a similar margin everywhere and kind of, you know, make sure it's semi straight. It's never going to be completely straight, believe me. This is fabric we're working with. So now I'm ready to make my cuts. I'm going to cut on the 10 and on the 0. And I don't want to cut too far, so I can also use the next one. Now, this probably didn't go all the way through, so I can just finish it this way. And then I can just fold this up and turn my piece, and I can trim it the other way. So again, now I, I want to make sure that I use the zero line along the bottom here and then making sure that I have equal distance here from the inner frame and this is looking pretty good I can make my cuts and I will have a perfectly square panel block to place into a quilt replacing a piece block or throwing them in anywhere but this is the best and easiest way to square up those panel blocks. One of the, my favorite things to do to use these rulers for is also if you do any kind of machine embroidery, other kind of embroidery, maybe embroidery with a lot of embellishments. You know, the issue that we have when we're using regular rulers to trim these up is that when you place a regular ruler on top, it's going to um, kind of topple on top if there's thickness in the block, which usually is with your embroidery. But what is beautiful about the stripology rulers with the slits, they will just lift up wherever there's thickness inside the block, or um, even if with seams and, and things like that. So it will really hold everything in place. It will kind of push this down so your block will be perfectly squared every single time. So I'm going to just use this center. It's hard to see on the white fabric, but I can see my center here. So here I'm thinking this is probably going to be an eight and a half inch, what I'm going to trim this to. So again, I want to place my arrows on the four corners. So now I have it marked here. And now we just want to make sure it's centered. I think the center of the block is right here. This is looking good. I have even space on both sides and I can make my trims. And then I just turn and repeat on the other side, making sure that this cut edge is aligned with the bottom and even distance on each side. There it is. And here we have our block ready to go into whatever you need to use it for. I hope you enjoyed learning how the Stripology Squared Ruler works so well for fuzzy cutting. The Stripology XL Ruler, of course, has all of those squaring up lines and markings as well. However, the Squared Rulers are just so handy to grab, easier to maneuver, so they work best for me every time. Thank you for watching. Well, there it is. Um, really easy to do all these trimming up blocks, uh, trimming up panels to use then into a quilt. And you may have noticed the quilt behind me. I talked about this last week, kind of after we played the video that I used. Uh, this is from Curiouser and Curiouser. This is my Emma quilt. Actually, we took it outside and took a photo so you can see the whole thing because it's a twin size. Um, and I wanted to show you. So we have the fabric in now. And so we started shipping your pre-orders. And um, so I used both bundles. So it's two bundles. I'll show you those bundles later on in the show. 
And then I used all five different colors of the Alice and Queens. Just cut them out. Um, it worked perfectly because the Emma quilt has eight inch block, eight inch finished blocks. So it just worked perfectly for um, those, those fuzzy cut uh, fabrics with the Queen and, and Alice, Alice in Wonderland. So I've always been asked, um, oh, I, I wanted to show you the back too. The back, I used the rest of the bundle <laughs> for the back. It was awesome. I utilized it all. Um, yeah, so I've been asked what other patterns would work well with a panel like that. So Emma is so easy because you could just remove a few blocks and replace it with a panel block or a fussy cut block. Um, and so I decided that I needed to kind of go through some of my patterns and see which one work well um, for this kind of a concept. So I made a list for us that you can now go to uh, on the website, go to bonus charts and, and templates, and you can just download this and print it. So what this has, I'm gonna show you in the overhead. Um, it has the name of the quilt in one column, and then the book or pattern that it is in, and then here you'll have the block size. And I'm gonna just go through these patterns real quick and show you, because, so the reason, behind reasoning behind why I chose some patterns and others maybe not that are maybe similar so whenever a pattern maybe has four blocks coming together or something that creates a secondary pattern it's kind of hard to break it up by throwing just a random block or a panel block in it unless there are you know certain layouts so there may be some quilts that have certain layouts that would work well more of a random layout that will work well for this process. And then some patterns maybe don't have a full block, but a portion of the block that would be perfect to replace with something fuzzy cut. So let's check out these patterns really quickly. We can go through them. So this, I'm gonna start with the ones out of the Stripology new, new book. Of course, Wanda would be a perfect one. This is a nine inch finished block. So you could frame something or just use that. Jackie is a large block. This is a 14 inch block, but you could also just use a panel square and then put a border on it and replace it in there. Harmony 2 out of the same book is a 7 inch block, so many fun options there. I love it because it's kind of offset. Um, then we have Jojo. Jojo would be perfect for this. Um, Jojo finishes at 8.5 inches square. So Many, many panel uh, blocks would work for that one. So now we're on to the Stripology Mixology, and this is Coral, and that's an eight inch block. Perfect, just like Emma. I might look weird be um, to you to think of it because of the background, but I think it would be really great to um, use. Uh, then next up is Marina, a bit bigger block. So these are 10 and a half inch finished. So you could totally even take out block A and just use the diagonal blocks and then uh, panels and all the rest. So then we have Rocky Road, that's a strip quilt, but if you would just take out the, the scrappy parts in the middle, this would be perfect to do some fuzzy cutting, but that's a rectangle, so it's a six by eight rectangle. Um, two timer, so two timer B would actually work much better because of the layout, but so instead of changing out one block, you would change out the set of four. So it would be an eight inch block because the blocks are four inches. So if you change out four, um, there you would have an eight inch block. Now we're into uh, the Stripology Squared book. Prisms would be perfect. As you can imagine, the squares are kind of almost framed so that that would just look really good. Um, fractions is another one that I think would be fun just because the squares are so, uh, or the pieces are so random and kind of uh, at all kinds of angles. So it would be perfect to pop some images in there. Uh, eight and a half inches fractions. And so is another part of me also in the same book. So this is more of a, just a regular horizontal layout. So you could, you would probably need, want to be a little bit more organized with that one, but a great one to use. So now we're gonna go on to our single patterns. Hope I think would be great, especially if you do some kind of a medallion layout or offset um, barn racing, that one is in the bottom corner. I think that'd be really cool to kind of replace blocks. Um, so the connecting black line, as you can imagine, would be kind of connecting them. 
Uh, then we have Venus, and Venus, I think, would work much better with some of the random uh, layouts versus this one that I'm showing here. So there's a few different layouts for Venus, so um, this one would work too, but it would be kind of cool to do it for the random ones. And then we have Roxanne. Roxanne would work just like Emma. You would just pop these in. Uh, Roxanne is a seven and a half inch block, just like Venus. Hope was nine and a half. Uh, then we have, of course, Emma. As you can see, I've done this actually three times before. Uh, Emma just seems to be such a, a great one for this. Clarissa is another one where uh, you have a direction, but it, with, you know, strategic placement of the fuzzy cut would be really good. Clarissa is a nine and a half inch block. Uh, then we have Katie. Again, eight inch block would be really cool to throw in something random there. Um, Taylor is a rectangle. It's a rectangular block. So this one would measure seven and a half by 12 and a half. But you could also, if you have something smaller, just choose it to, choose it to put into the inner part of the block. Then we have Nina. I would love to see something done with Nina because that's a six by eight rectangular. So uh, that could be really fun with it, within those random nine patches. Carnival has a six inch finished square inside the block. So it'd be really nice um, to use. Then we have three strip quilts. So we have O strip, which I really like because it's, you know, the, the circles are offset, but it's, a, it's an odd size, seven by 11. It would be cool to maybe to use, you know, um, sports themed fabric or something like that. Then we have strip twist. That's a seven and a half inch block, would work perfectly. And then strip off would be great too, very kind of, organized um, as a 10 inch block. So if you have some panels laying around and don't know what to do with, do with them, check out some of these patterns and make sure you go to, um, there's a link in the description of the video. Go straight to bonus charts and templates on the website and you'll find this at the top. So just click on the, on the title and it'll bring up the PDF and you can print it. So. Something I played with today. I'm sure there are way more uh, patterns, but this is a great start, isn't it? So any questions um, on any of those? Videos helped a lot. Yes, they do. And I'm sure even though you could probably have came up with, with these patterns yourself, it's always really great when I pull it all together because I can kind of visualize them all because I made them all. <laughs> What is the name of the pattern for the table runner? So this is called um, Low Tide. This was our season one um, Fast and Furious Club, one of the patterns for that, which was, I think it was like April or something of last year. So check that out. That's available as a single pattern um, that comes with a video class to show you how to do it. Well, does she go real, real fun and fast. All right. So, um, if you don't have any questions, did you see any of the quilt show that went on? Yes. Oh, I was going to talk about that. That was amazing. So I popped in on Facebook here and there, and that was so amazing to see all of your quilts. They are just, you made so many, and it was really awesome. And just to see all the different colors and fabrics that we used, uh, we've done good this past, this past year, uh, and then some. So loved it, loved it, and keep them coming. Keep them coming. I love it. Um, all right, so I uh, think I'm going to just move on and show you some of these fabrics. It's going to take a while because we have a lot to show you. Um, I'm going to start with a bundle. So remember when I showed you not too long ago, we had illustrations from, from Moda. It was a black and white line, um, and we had some of the coated fabrics to, to make the big tote bag. And um, we sold out of the bundles really fast, but I got another bundle called inked actually from timeless that's very similar so it's black and white so if you missed out on illustrations this is another great one and you know black and white are just they're always classic so these this one is really great so we have anything from really large scale so everything is just black and white um, large floral here and then we have just a little bit smaller black and white floral love these roses uh, then 
we have the white and kind of line drawing floral and same one in the black so I'm just going to kind of alternate the black and the white we have an, an awesome typography print with some postage stamps on it I love handwriting like that and we have it in the black as well and um, some circular dots really cool both in the white and the black I love the motion in this and just looking at it together there's such variety in pattern um, we have kind of like a dot which is actually squares both in the black and white and then this one is kind of like these little almost like fireworks so both in the white and the black and then we have a few more prints we have the large kind of I don't know if this is dandelion blooms or could be fireworks we have a little circular print geometric print and then the little branches um, and the sprigs so six nine so this is a 15 piece bundle so a, lo a little bit larger than the illustrations but I really love it this is classic black and white um, but just a little hint of gray in there but uh, really really lovely I didn't pull any one yards because you can put any colors with this and if you go look at the illustrations bundle all of the same stuff would work with this because it's really similar um, colorways so again it's called inked all right put this over there um, next one up is a bundle called pearl p-u-r-l it is a um, by Ruby Star and look at these this is for this is for our knitters or just our cats that like to play with <laughs> yarn balls but I really think these are so cool I love the colorway um, so then we have their very interesting prints we have um, got to turn the bird right side up so uh, great deep navies with the teals so I love this one um, we got the knitting needles and scissors and crochet needles and then of course we have the actual knitting texture and then we have the more of the teals there's always just a little specks of gold metallic in their line so I love these tea kettles and the tea kettles have quilting designs on them I love this um, then we have the yarn balls in the light background and then more into that coral color which I think is so pretty we have the knitted texture so 12 pieces are in this bundle um, adding a little bit of pink in here and then this light the light color is a really nice kind of taupe so I love this I love this tone so this is the pearl bundle and of course I had to play with some colors I started with kind of the taupey gray so there's gray throughout so I went more gray than the taupe um, started with some some ruby star of speckled speckled dove is the perfect gray um, for these flowers the jot dot light gray has the light and the dark and then the jacks fog is kind of the darkest value um, with lights in it as well into the more pinks I did from light deco stitch pink powder and then the dash flow conch is kind of that medium pink into the more coral floor elements coral and then the speckled warm red which has that darkest tone um, in there with a little bit specks of of gold and then finishing it off with the teals I started with a lighter teal because it is throughout um, the prints here so this is deco stitch teal fog and then moonscape spruce beautiful uh, uh, I have a little texture of that will go in directional bubbleberry soft teal was perfect with the lights and the darks in there and then the speckled teal navy for the darkest hues in this bundle and then I even found a perfect stripe if you wanted to add a stripe the diagonal stripe 
Discover in the Navy works great. It has a little bit of gold and has the darkest um, navy blue and the medium blues. So I think this will be cool if you wanted to do something with a stripe with them. All right, so this is Pearl, P-U-R-L, by Ruby Star. And so as before, we took photos of all of these poles today, and that will be on the blog. If you want to go back and look at them closer, it's always really fun to see them all together. All right, this next one is called Homestead Holiday. Yes, another Christmas line. Also was a pre-order. This is from Riley Blake. So beautiful, classic poinsettias in really nice deep red. And I love this um, hue of green. This one is one of my favorites. We've got the stockings. I love the gingham stockings and the plaid stockings with a little bit of holly. Um, and this print is also very unique. We've got the Christmas trees in these really cool pots. So we have this nice cream setting, and then we go into the deep reds. So a nice burgundy deep red with the white poinsettias, and then we have the holly and some snowflakes in the red. Going into the light green, so we have some light greens in there. We have the stockings again and the snowflakes. And then going into the deeper greens, with the holly and into the black background with poinsettias, the trees, and finishing it off with the black snowflakes. Just a lovely holiday line. Homestead Holiday is that one. And of course, I played with this one. We are going to start with the blacks, um, darkest black, love to knit. Unwind in the ebony has a little bit of a almost a plaid texture because there's no plaid in here would be good And then the spectrostatic black because it has white specks I feel like that would be a great fit. I did two greens the bumblebrees Celtic green kind of plays with the lighter tones and the darker tones and then the grunge juniper a great one It also has a little bit of texture in deeper colors So that works well for the reds. I chose two that are kind of different. So spotted garnet is a little bit more uh, burgundy, and then the other one is warmer. So there's kind of they kind of do the two spectrums. So canvas merlot is the other one, and then it did two creams. So we did spotted ivory, perfect cream here, and then the grunge eggshell work really well. And if you want it, a little bit of a plaid plaid. We have a buffalo plaid in the black and red that would work very well with this line. So this is our, actually this is called farm, I wrote something wrong. This is called farmhouse Christmas. <laughs> this is farmhouse Christmas. I totally botched that name. Sorry, honey. So this is not Mr. Honey Producer's fault. He wrote what I put on the sheet. <laughs> Should we put the right name on, name up? Farmhouse Christmas. Yes, it's been uh, um, maybe too much relaxing this weekend. <laughs> I gotta get my brain right again. Farmhouse Christmas. I knew it was something farmhouse. All right, so I that, that. I thought that's what it was, but I wasn't sure. No, you had to just take my word for it, of course. Yeah, just double check me all the time. This is great. All right, so another one. This next one is called Trellis. Um, totally different colorways. We're going bright, bright again. Really gorgeous florals um, and awesome colors here. So I'm going to start with this big print. Uh, it's from Cloth Clothworks. So we have just really striking on the black background, purples, uh, really warm reds and this mm, amazing green that stands out really nicely. So then we have the purple print here. Same print, but more purple flowers. And I love the mixing of the purples and the violets. We have a stripe that uh, 
it's kind of got a little bit of an ombre feel. Just, just look at that movement. It's got a lot of movement. We have a tone on tone print here, geometric. And I uh, love that it goes from the darker purples into the lavenders. And we have a tone on tone here, like a little spatter. Then we have the floral print in the, with a purple mixed in with the burgundy and the bright pinks, reds and pinks. The tone on tone here with a purple in it. And then um, in the red or pink, I don't know, it's kind of both, pink and red. It really makes this red so nice and warm. We have the stripe and then we have the bright greens. Just beautiful. With the tone on tones here. And then um, the stripe. So I know a lot of folks' um, favorite color combinations uh, include these purples and greens, and the pink is just great as well. So I pulled some great colors to go with this. Um, we started with the green, so actually I'm going to start with the darkest one. So the Dimples Fern has a mixture of dark and light in there. That sprig has a little bit more yellow. So, and then the floral elements and the lettuce has the lights and the darks, and it really shines bright with these. Then went into the reddish pinks. I started kind of bright with a spectrostatic electrica, but it has specks that look purple when you have it next to these, so I thought it was like just awesome with it. The grunge raspberry is a pink, but it has purple in it, so that was perfect. And then the floor elements in the fuchsia. So a little bit more of a into the purplish hues there. And then I did four of the purples because I wanted to start with the lightest. So we have the dash flow pansy. And then the medium would be the floor elements in the iris because it has lavender in it too. We have spectrostatic old amethyst. And then the bluest one would be the canvas amethyst. So you see the hue difference, but it just works really nicely with all of these and uh, would make a gorgeous combination. Now, one more fun print that I saw as I was pulling these, if I wanted to do anything like a bag out of it or something, a quilt that needed a backing, look how awesome um, the Friends in Flight would look with this, with all the bright reds, with the puffins, and a perfect um, lavender background. So I had to bring, I had to bring them along. The puffin was talking to me, so uh, this would make an awesome back for this quilt if you like puffins and butterflies. All right, so this again is called trellis, and so last but not least, I'm gonna show you our. Curiouser bundles. So Curiouser and Curiouser by Tula Pink is of course the quilt behind me, the Emma quilt that you saw. Um, she kind of split her this line into two colorways. So which is what we did just to make the bundles a little bit smaller. So it, it's a 10 piece bundle each. Uh, we have Wonder and then we have Daydream. So I'm gonna start with Daydream. I believe this is Daydream. I might switch it. But it's curiouser and curiouser. Um, like I said, we have actually three bundles of this. This is all based on um, Alice in Wonderland. So this, if you are a fairy tale lover, Alice lover, you have to have some of this. Now, was Alice in Wonderland one of your favorites? No. Nah. Not really? <laughs> yeah. So I have to be honest we did not really have Alice in Wonderland in Iceland so I didn't watch it until I was an adult what'd you have? Oh, we had all kinds of Icelandic and Scandinavian fairy tales yeah. uh, this one so this bundle has all the purples and the greens the lime greens I uh, love these big roses so I quilted my uh, Emma with big cabbage roses I thought that fit really well so then this bundle has a little bit of the turquoise and just a pop of pink and so both bundles kind of have that so just beautiful stuff and then uh, the other one I'm just gonna kind of lay it on top so we can see both here 
So we have um, the same print here in the in the gray. So it's the hat, the teacups, the bunny. I don't know these characters' names though. So and then this one with a green. Um, we have. I remember this is called actually suited and booted. This actual print. <laughs> Love the teacups. So this this bundle has more of the neutrals, and then it has um, some of the little bit of the turquoise or the teals. Um, yeah, turquoise, yellow, cats, and then the pinks. So we have the flat, small floral, and then last but not least the teacups and the pink. Now if you're wondering where are uh, Alice and the Queen, so we have a third bundle that is just these five prints. So we have Alice in uh, in the four in three colors. So and we actually hand cut this print. So we hand cut it so you should be able to get two, four, six, eight, at least eight. Tenth one is uh, is a little tight on the top here, but at least eight you would be able to get out of each half yard cut. So um, we have the turquoise, Alice, and then also in the pink. And then also in the yellow. So these three are um, the Alice, and I used all of them in my quilt. And then we have the Queen of Hearts in both the red. It's the same same thing. They can be squared up down to the same, but you really only get eight on this one. It's just a little bit larger, so you don't really get this last one. But but um, it has both comes both in the red and then in the hot pink, and kind of with the purple face. Gotta love it. I love the attitude um, in these. So if you want to have some fun with fuzzy cutting and, and, you know, nothing's saying that you have to cut it square, you could always go in and go rectangular. You can go rectangular this way. You can really hone in more on the face. You can do so many fun things with this. And um, if, if you know anybody that loves Alice in Wonderland, I think that's a must. We have two of the prints, the two of the suited and booted um, prints available in one yards uh suited and booted daydream is the purple and then wonder is the um kind of the ivory background with the rainbow uh suits so this is curiouser and curiouser in stock and already flying out so check that out do we have any questions on these Any questions on, on fussy cutting or playing with these? I know it might be a little scary, but it's easy. It's very easy. I, like I talked about um, on last, last week's Tipsy Tuesday when I was cutting out the queens, I found the center was like right in the heart of on her cheek. So it was really easy to, to find the center and just cut, out, cut them out to the size that I wanted for um, the Emma quilt. So, so very easy. Use all those little tricks. All right, do we have our live winner ready to go? Mr. Oh, not yet. <laughs> yeah? Um, Fran French, that's great. Congratulations, Fran, you won a $25 gift card. Make sure you send us a quick email to help at geequiltdesigns.com. And we will get you um, the gift card right away so you can go shopping. Um, okay, I saw some question. I'm trying to. Oh, um, oh, somebody was asking if we would have any of the Alice or the Queens in, in bigger pieces. Yes, we will have one yards as well. We just haven't gotten them cut yet. So there will be one yards. So if you wanted to um, get a little more, that would be really cool. All right. 
Um, thank you for not cutting partial Alice and the Queen. Yes, um, I, you know, I always wonder about the decisions for how they, why they printed not the length of the, the length of the fabric, but they printed salvage to salvage. I always wonder about that. So um, it would just make no sense to cut it with a rotary cutter because you would just waste so much. So we want to make sure that you can utilize it. So we, we did that hand cut. Um, makes a huge difference. All right, so that is it for us tonight. We um, just have our last piece, which is your second ch chance of winning, winning a $25 gift card. Just by answering this question, what is your favorite fairy tale? Oh, I don't know if I have a favorite. Uh, probably, I mean, I read a Little Red Riding Hood a lot. All of the H.C. Anderson uh, fairy tales. Lots of stuff that you don't know anything about. No. What's your favorite fairy tale? <laughs> Not really? No? It would be more like uh, Godzilla or something. <laughs> Not really a fairy tale. No, that's all right. We would love to hear what is your favorite fairy tale and uh, let us know in the comments and that's all you have to do to enter the giveaway. <laughs> I, was, uh, I don't know if that was a fairy tale. No saw Rimbo, Ari Ari, you took your fairy Rimbo as far as into the well. Um, it would be interesting if somebody knows what you're talking about. Ricky Tiki Timbo, no saw. Nobody does. <laughs> it's a book. I had to order it to make sure he wasn't messing with me. So I had to order it and, um, yeah, we found it. It's a really weird one, but... <laughs> Anyways, uh, our next Tipsy Tuesday episode will be next week, June 8th, and I will be teaching you how easy it is to do mitered borders. So don't miss next week. Um, also, we'll be here this Friday, this coming Friday, which is June 4th at 3 p.m. Central with our fresh cocktail of, first cocktail of June. So don't miss that one either. That is it for us. Any last words? Take it easy. Stay cool. Now that everybody's hot everywhere, pretty much. Stay yeah. cool out there. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm.